I mean, similar to what you just said, I, I think that sometimes you got to allow yourself time. You know, that you can't, you can't measure your success and whether or not you're going to make it or not, or it's going to happen um, by the standards that are placed on you. Sometimes yeah. it takes a lot of time. Sometimes, um, you know, what you're doing right now may have some effect later on. You 100%. Know? Yeah. And yeah. so, like, again, Kogi didn't happen to me until my my mid thirties, mm -hmm. you know? And so if it would have happened to me way earlier, I don't know if I could have been able to control it. Yeah. You know, be, or patient, it. be patient yeah. and don't give up. I was messing up, man. And I got put on the chopping block and I was done. I couldn't get another job after that. You know, I was kind of scared, man, because when you're jobless and kind of broke when you're young, that's one thing, you know, it's actually fun. But um, when you got a family, it was scary. And then my friend called me, let's put Korean barbecue in a taco. We start right here in Hollywood, uh, right by the Arclight. Um, we started right in front of a club called Green Door yeah. in Cabana. Um, we had no business plan, and our plans just unfolded throughout the night. You know, our night our night brain went on like, let's feed the bouncers. Then the bouncers like, oh, this is bomb. You can park right here. Boom, we have a parking spot. You know, club lets out. Bouncers are making room for us. Like you know, they make like a line for us. They're like, yo, you guys gotta try this. And so everything just kind of fell in place right there. Um, so that was yeah, that was the beginning of Kogi. Um, again, it's we're going back to the word growth. It's about growing, you know. Um, you have to be willing. You first, you can't be embarrassed or ashamed of who you were at a certain point in life because you just didn't know any better. And sometimes you're just going through and you're growing, you're doing things. Um, but I think through those journeys, you have to be open to certain signals you know i believe in i believe in the universe st type stuff you know like i believe in signals and moments and and breakthroughs you know and the change happens when you can it, you can see those things and and accept them and absorb them and do something about it because the reason why i say this is because if these little transitional moments if you're thinking about it and feeling it and contemplating it, and if it's tapping you on the shoulder, that means that's the time. I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, that's definitely one facet of it. You know? And that part of it was we were being too chefy with it. You know what I mean? Like we came out, our first burger, we came out with a uh, charred scallion relish and, uh, and lime, like, you know, lime fermented mayo and uh, barley and quinoa and uh, farro in our patty with seaweed and uh, meat garum and uh, fish sauce. And That's an easy know, sell. Like, yeah, it's an easy sure. sell for four bucks to a 16 year old kid, um, not. <laughs> um, so, but that we were being too chefy. And again, and, and then through the journey, maybe if we didn't let go of our ego, we would have continued to try to one up that recipe, right? But instead, because we're surrounded by the community of Watts and West Oakland, um, we, we can't do anything but listen, you know? And by listening, what we do is we adapt ourselves and we go back to the basics and we go back to our soul and our core. And, um, and we look around us, just as if I was to feed all of you in this room. Um, which you will be doing later which tonight. Which we'll be doing later. Kogi will be here later. But I have to look around and, and feel the energy of the room. You know, and I have to feel the energy of the neighborhood. I have to feel the energy of the people. And through that energy, we can decide how we switch and change things. I had nothing else to do. And the other part is where uh, you ever see, it was a horrible movie, but you ever see Ninja Assassin with Rain? You guys see that movie? You know, like how he's training his whole life, you know, and then, and then like he gets, you know, he becomes the bastard of the school and then he has to flee and run over the thing and then, but then he has this huge foundation of training, but then he becomes an assassin. And like, um, that's kind of what happened with me. You know, like uh, I had the, uh, La Dan working at Oriol, working at the Beverly Hilton and all those things. It really built my foundation so that by the time it, you know, it, it came to the point where I had to make this food, um, you know, all of the foundation was there. So I started playing jazz and just like playing with the flavors. So the approach is still the same. Kind of used my street sense in figuring out what was going on. So 
um, at first it all sounds pretty alluring, you know, like people coming to you saying, you could have 40 of these, you should mm-hmm. be all over the world. I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. And then they take you out to dinner and do all these things. Wow. But, uh, every single time there was like this sixth sense within me that felt like this doesn't feel right, you know? Right. And so I just followed that, you know, I think we had some arguments internally. Um, I think s- maybe I stunted the growth of Kogi cause I was ultimately the decision maker. Um, maybe I stunted the growth, but I think it, in the end, I made the right decisions for Kogi because we still own it. Uh, we've never taken outside money and it's stronger than we've ever been mm. 11 years later. And I think that now I'm in a position to give life lessons right. and, and I'm glad you see those things is that sometimes in life, you got to know how to be a number two to be a number mm-hmm. one, you mm-hmm. know? And that's something that we don't teach enough right now, you know, because everyone wants to be a number one. For sure. Right. You know, that you, is the culture we live and, in. And especially you want to blow up right away overnight. Right. But you got to you got to know how to be a number two or a number three or a number four or a number 20. Yeah. You know, you got to know what it means to be the building block to that pyramid. You right. Know? And um, and there are moments where it, it is actually more important for you to to be a silent support mechanism. You know, right. um, and that really comes from a kitchen environment. You know, sometimes when you're in a kitchen, um, it's really important. Even if you're at the top of your game, sometimes you got to like, you know, you got to be the support for whoever's shining at that moment. Right. And you can't let your ego get in the way. It's like team basketball or whatever the case may be. You know? Right, right, right. You know, <laughs> sometimes you got to pass the rock. Exactly. You know, right. and but ultimately that leads to the win. So for you know, sure. sometimes the moment's yours, you know, so that's beautiful.